Hello, we're uh, back today to talk about some of the experiments I've been doing to uh, improve the uh, current collector, uh, or I should say maybe the current collector slash electrodes on a uh, supercapacitor. When you build a, a typical uh, supercapacitor, you're probably going to need a current collector on uh, either side of the anode and the cathode, the two electrodes. The current collector is a, a low resistance connection to the outside world and it uh, provides a means to, to connect to the, uh, the capacitor and to uh, distribute the current uh, across the surface of the, uh, the electrodes to do that. Typically, at least in the experimental side of things, you'll probably use something like a graphite foil uh, to do that. This is low resistance, easily handled, cuts with scissors, uh, good conductivity. Uh, you can uh, put some little copper strips on it like this to uh, connect to the outside world. So it's a, a good current collector. For production, uh, probably a little bit uh, too expensive, too much bulk. Uh, not the best thing if you were going to uh, manufacture a uh, supercapacitor, but it's great on the experimental side. So uh, what I want to show you today is how I've uh, taken the graphite foil uh, current collectors and basically uh, in, a, uh, in a capacitor, a supercapacitor where you have a layer of a current collector, an electrode, a separator, an electrode, and a current collector, I've combined uh, the function of the current collector and the electrode into one by improving on uh, the graphite current collector as its own electrode. Uh, we're going to look at two different ways I've done that. Both of them involve uh, exfoliation of the, uh, the surface of the graphite. Uh, and uh, you want to do that uh, for a couple reasons. For instance, if you uh, tried to build a capacitor with a graphite uh, foil sheet, a paper separator, and another piece of graphite, you would have a standard two-plate capacitor, and based on the area and the, uh, the gap between the two, you could calculate the capacitance, and at best it's in the millifarad range. Although you will get some improvement using graphite and using a, uh, an ion-conducting uh, liquid as an electrolyte, since the graphite sheet by itself is not very porous, at least at the atomic level, there's very few spaces to uh, store the charge in the pores of the ions that are shuttling back and forth. So what we want to do is to try to make uh, the graphite sheet a little more porous. Uh, to do that, uh, if you remember, there's been a, a few uh, YouTube videos in the past few months about uh, uh, making graphene, an allotrope of a carbon from a graphite sheet in an electrochemical exfoliation. What that means is you'll take a graphite sheet, space it uh, from a, uh, a second uh, graphite sheet, take this sandwich, immerse it in an electrolyte, and uh, uh, between the two uh, electrodes here you'll supply a current. After uh, half a minute or so, you'll see a little bit of bubbling and a little bit of uh, surface erosion uh, on the, uh, the graphite foil between the sheets. That erosion that you're seeing and the little worms that we call them that sort of uh, float off of the surface is graphene, at least a form of uh, graphene if uh, your definition of a graphene extends to uh, something more than a single atomic layer. A single atom layer of uh, uh, graphene is the true definition, but you might have dozens or a hundred atomic layers of the graphene that comes off uh, the surface here, and then you would later, through either a mechanical means or something like a sonication, break that down further to uh, generate a product that's closer to a, a, a true graphene. But that said, uh, uh, that technique, that method, uh, uh, got me thinking about what I could do to make a better graphite foil surface to use the graphite foil as its own electrode in a, um, in a supercapacitor. So what we did is 
we took this little sandwich here that uh, you would immerse in the electrolyte and I'll uh, insert a little video clip here shortly. From that video clip now you can uh, see the little bubbling and the little graphite worms uh, percolating off of the surface. You would normally collect that uh, graphene, let it settle out or centrifuge it, sonicate it or through some other means, collect the graphene, uh, mix it with a binder, make an ink or a paste, spread that on the current collector. What I was able to do was to uh, eliminate most of those steps, take this uh, graphoil sheet, wrap it with a layer of this very uh, porous, very fine weave uh, cloth. So here we have a uh, piece of graphite, uh, a little piece of copper up here to uh, connect to it, but it's wrapped in this cloth as one of these electrodes and as the graphene is percolated off of the surface, or exfoliated if you will, the graphene particles are trapped in between the graphite foil and the cloth. So we've taken the sheet of graphene and coated it, I'm sorry, we've taken this sheet of graphite and now coated it with its own exfoliated uh, graphene particles and they're trapped in here. So at least that surface now has been converted to something that's highly conductive, very porous, and uh, the thought is hopefully make a, uh, uh, a good supercapacitor electrode out of a sheet of graphene. We, uh, we did that and I'll uh, share with you briefly some of the, uh, the test results. Uh, actually we did this uh, exfoliation in uh, two different ways. Uh, in addition to creating a quote fuzzy layer uh, on the surface due to the uh, using the electrochemical means. We were also uh, fortunate to have a uh, medium power laser uh, cutter in our shop here and the second thing that I was able to do was to take the same type of uh, graphene, cover it with the cloth, but first rather than electrochemically exfoliate it I uh, use the laser beam in a scanning mode to uh, cut through the surface. If I turn the power of the laser up very high, I would actually cut all the way through the sheet. So through a number of experiments and some trial and error and playing with the scan rate and the amount of power, uh, we were able to create just the right amount of uh, laser erosion or exfoliation, if you will, on the surface. I'll uh, insert again here some uh, photos where you can get a close-up view of that surface. But for instance, here's a sample here, uh, one of my test samples where we use various powers and scan rates. And let me see if I can get that in the light up here. Okay, you can sort of see some fuzzy areas, some scanned areas on this sheet. This was all done by uh, the, the laser. The uh, pattern that we used was a series of uh, uh, little circles uh, about six tenths of a millimeter in diameter with about 0.25 millimeter spacing and as the laser scanned every time uh, it came across that uh, 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 circle pattern it would turn on and then burn a little bit and stop turn on. Burn. So we ended up with a series of dots. You could use any pattern but uh, you wanted to create this fuzzy open surface on the, on the uh, uh, graphite. So again, we would then take the laser exfoliated, put in a paper separator, build up our sandwich again, and not unlike a lot of the experiments I do, I'm doing lately, uh, we end up with a, a little uh, a pouch here for ourselves. Uh, uh, we've chosen a standard size for the electrodes, uh, the uh, separator is one or two sheets of copy paper 
So here we have our plus and our minus, our anode, and our, our, uh, anode and cathode, and then insert it into a little poly bag, which we can seal off, which for a fair amount of experimental time, a couple days at least, we've contained the moisture in the electrolyte so it doesn't dry out, and, and we can test this over uh, multiple cycles. So let me uh, show uh, a few slides here that uh, uh, show some of the, uh, the test result uh, data. Okay, we're back with uh, some more information uh, summarizing the, uh, the test results here. I'll uh, start out with this slide, which I'll include in the video electronically. But here's a, a picture of the surface uh, of the uh, electrochemical exfoliated uh, uh, graph oil that was used in the test. Uh, a little bit hard to tell from this picture, but you can see that the surface now is uh, very fuzzy. There, were, there was a lot of uh, multi-layer, if you will, graphene on the surface. It was obviously compressed and compacted once it uh, was trapped between the graphite foil and the uh, uh, cloth. And uh, here's, an, here's an example of the, uh, the cloth again here. You can see it's very fine pores. And then uh, once it's wrapped with the cloth and compressed, a lot of that fuzziness gets compacted, but it's still uh, very porous. I would say that the, the depth of penetration here was about half the thickness of the 80 thousandths thick, uh, 80 thousandths of an inch original graph foil, so about 40 thousandths thick of exfoliation that's uh, trapped. When we get over to the laser uh, exfoliated, here's a couple pictures of what was going on there. Uh, in, in this photo here, you can see various patterns of, uh, of, of dots. This was during the experiments to determine the right scan rate, the right amount of power, the right depth of penetration, if you will. And I'll report out the exact numbers there in a minute. But uh, the slower the scan, the deeper the uh, laser penetrates and uh, roughens or exfoliates the, uh, the surface. I guess you could also argue that the carbon is heat treated at that point, but somewhat in an uncontrolled fashion. Uh, from the uh, little video clip of the, uh, the laser scanning, uh, it's an extremely bright light once the laser, which is infrared, hits the carbon. It's basically a carbon arc light at that moment, so I'm sure we're... Oh. Well into the one two thousand degree uh, temperature range as we uh, heat up the carbons with the laser. And then over here uh, with the, uh, again, cloth pulled back, you can, you can see the compressed pattern that still remains on the surface. This was uh, after the testing. Um, and then the final pouch assembly. Uh, for all of the tests uh, that I'm doing these days, we are uh, using a polyethylene pouch, which uh, allows the uh, electrolyte to uh, be contained, stay moist, doesn't dry out. Uh, if you're going to be cycling this for a few days. It's not a perfect seal, but it's a, a lot better than just clamping in free air. And then uh, the uh, cloth-wrapped electrode. Even though I didn't need to wrap the cloth around the laser exfoliated graphite to make it the same uh, test conditions, I wrapped it as well. This just like I did with the graph oil. It was necessary in the graph oil to trap the exfoliated uh, graphene layers. Here, after the laser treatment, I wrapped it before I assembled the cell. Then we're, we're just using a paper separator and um, a symmetrical cell on the other side. So this is a symmetrical carbon-carbon cell, if you will. 
Uh, in terms of test results, let's get right to those. Uh, the electrochemical uh, exfoliated uh, portion, just a minute here. There we go. The electrochemical exfoliated uh, graphite uh, under the 10 milliamp test conditions. It's stored energy uh, for uh, total discharge time, 23 minutes, 52 seconds. So round numbers, 24 minutes. And that yielded a total of 4 milliamp hours and 4 milliwatt hours. Um, almost identical, I guess probably within the, uh, the air of the testing procedures. The laser exfoliated uh, lasted for 26 minutes. Uh, both of these were controlled in terms of the one molar zinc sulfate uh, electrolyte, the same size of electrodes, the same clamp and compression, that sort of thing, the same charge time. We charge these up to 2.2 volts. Uh, uh, you're plenty safe, I think, up to around 2, 2.1 volts with the zinc sulfate. We pushed it to uh, uh, 2.2 didn't seem to get uh, much plating out of the, uh, the zinc at that level for the amount of charge time anyway. I will point out a couple things. During the electrochemical exfoliation, unlike what you may have seen in similar tests uh, on uh, some of the uh, YouTube uh, videos, uh, we did not use a constant voltage. During the experiments, it uh, I found that using a constant current produced a much, much more controllable exfoliation. I started out, out at a uh, half of an amp of a current for about the approximately six square inch uh, uh, electrode size. That sort of opened up the surface of a little bit, if you will, half an amp for five minutes. Then gave it a, a hard shot at twice that current, one amp for eight minutes. Uh, this uh, created a more violent exfoliation, but again, all the little worms, the bubbles that are coming off of that surface are trapped in the, in the, uh, in the cloth, between the cloth and uh, the, uh, uh, the graphite foil uh, uh, base. And then we finished off with kind of a smoothing action back to half an amp for three minutes. The uh, exfoliation was done in one molar zinc sulfate, the same uh, uh, electrolyte or the same material used as the electrolyte, so that during the exfoliation process, the electrolyte was soaking in, driven in, if you will, uh, into that graphite that would be used as the electrode. We did this twice, so we had both an anode and a cathode uh, uh, electrode. When we did the laser exfoliation, uh, after a number of uh, experiments to get the right amount of uh, scan rates, lower scan rate, to deeper penetration, higher power, deeper penetration, that sort of thing. The pattern that was used was a uh, six millimeter dot diameter with a quarter uh, of a millimeter dot spacing between the, uh, the dots. So uh, that dot pattern produced a basically um, what do I have here? Um, a series of uh, dots. I guess I didn't report out the number, but there were about 60 dots in the horizontal direction. So on, off, on, off, on, off, 60 times across the, uh, the scan. This was done at, at least for the uh, laser that I have at a 30% uh, power rate. 81 millimeters per second scan rate. Oh, here it is, 56 by 67 dot pattern. And then uh, uh, that resulted in what looked like a good electrode to run the test with about a 40 thousandths uh, penetration in the 80 thousandths thick uh, graphite. Uh, same 4 milliamp hour, 4 milliwatt hour, not a much difference here. So what's the bottom line to all of this? Uh, did we end up with a cell that's uh, much better than what uh, you're able to do if you take a perfected graphite or carbon ink or paste and coat it on to a graphite electrode? The answer is no. You can get a little bit uh, thicker material. You can get uh, possibly a little more uh, uh, number of pores and size of pores 
depending on your carbon, your carbon compounds, mixtures, or even composite. So you can do a little better. That said, going from millifarads of an original uh, graph oil sheet to, I'm sure, several farads at uh, this very simple exfoliation process is kind of cool. It might have applications at the microelectronics level if you were to silk screen some graphite onto a circuit and then laser exfoliate it in place and produce some capacitors. I, uh, I think some of the uh, work that's going on at some of the universities is uh, along those lines where they have an interdigitated uh, laser pattern uh, creating a uh, capacitance in a laser exfoliated or, or laser uh, controlled uh, 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 surface. Uh, so we're going to leave it at that. Um, I think uh, it was an interesting experiment, but uh, we'll probably move on to uh, something else with the goal still to simplify the overall sun, cell assembly, having the uh, simple yet uh, low cost, low cost yet simple uh, cell, if you will, that uh, possibly has a current collector and uh, an electrode uh, uh, in the same uh, sense in, the, in a single component. So, if again, if you have any comments or uh, questions or anything to add, please uh, freely do that. Uh, uh, on the YouTube channel. Thanks again.